the NBA Finals, the prevailing thought, the defending champion Lakers, simply unstoppable. Shaquille O'Neal was not just a man, he was Goliath, too strong and too dominant to be denied. How could anyone knock off this powerful team which had not lost in their previous 19 games? But the league's diminutive MVP cast in the role of David answered with a performance befitting a giant. The statement he set out to make was clear. He did not come to the NBA Finals to be swept away. God is the Lakers' feeling of invincibility. And with it, the talk of an unbeaten postseason. The Lakers did not just hear the footsteps of the Sixers. They saw them. So the prevailing question heading into game two, how will Goliath respond? at Staples Center, downtown Los Angeles. The capacity crowd, better than 19,000 still filing into the arena as the Philadelphia 76ers get ready to make their way onto the court. A Sixer team that was electrifying in game one Wednesday night. And the Los Angeles Lakers away. From their most important game of the season, the Lakers feel it is desperation time. They do not want to go to Philadelphia in the improbable position of trailing two games to nothing. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Alvin, along with Doug Collins. And, Doug, as we look back to game one here at Staples on Wednesday night, before the telecast, we discuss the fact that Shaquille O'Neal always looks to dominate in the first games of playoff series, uh, usually succeeds, but that was not the case. Uh, in terms of the Sixers being able to hold uh, Shaq. Shaq did what he had to do, but what happened to the rest of the Lakers? Well, a couple things, Mark. First of all, Shaq did dominate. He threw up some brilliant numbers, but he also faltered, too. You see 44 and 20, but 12 missed free throws, some critical ones in the fourth quarter and overtime. That could be a factor once again tonight if the game is close. But what the 76ers really did was they geared their defense to this man, Kobe Bryant. You see Aaron McKee, his thought process, keep him in front make him suit jump shots do not let him get to the free throw line this time it's eric snow forcing the outside jump shot now when he did get to the rim who was waiting on him to kimbe matombo for one of his five block shots now the critical play of the game this is kobe time goes to the basket spins and turns the ball over the sixers go on and win the game in overtime what happened well kobe bryant who's been brilliant 31 points average fisher 15 they were held to 15 total 7 of 26 they took away the penetration of kobe Fisher got no easy shots. So what do I expect tonight? I think Kobe's going to try to get going early. And we're going to find out what the Lakers are made of. This is the first much win situation they've had in the playoffs. We'll see how they respond, Mark. And the big question concerning the Philadelphia 76 is the injury status of their starting guard, Aaron McKee. For more on that, let's check in with Lewis Johnson. All right, Marv, thanks a lot. I'm back by the Philadelphia locker room where I talked to 76ers head trainer Lenny Currier a little while ago. And we talked about Aaron McKee's avulsion. That's the medical word for it but actually what it is is a chip fracture right here on this bone where the red dot is and so whenever McKee rolls that ankle back and forth he'll have some pain now this injury is distinctly different from Eric Snow's injury which is a hairline fracture right there where you see the red dotted lines I ask a courier how is he going to manage these injuries tonight for these guys to help them both play because they will be both on the court and he said he'll treat both the injuries like sprains he's going to use three types of tape and give them a lot of support so that they'll be able to move back and forth on the court and then of course I ask him about about pain management obviously they'll be in a lot of pain and he said well they'll pop a couple of Advil but the best pain reliever will be rushing through their body at the tip of the ball and of course that is adrenaline Marv all right thank you Lewis and in game number one it was another magnificent performance by Allen Iverson capped off by his work in overtime seven of the sixer points in overtime seven unanswered points for Iverson to lead his club to the victory well Marv we saw why he was the MVP we saw him with moments of brilliance early in the game where he came down the floor on the fast break. Kobe Bryant, an all-league 
defender squares him up, knocks the shot in. But we also saw moments of frustration. Last play of the game in regulation, Teron Lou would not let him touch the basketball. The game then has to go into overtime. But that did not deter Allen Iverson. The big three-pointer here to give his team the two-point lead late in the overtime. The step-back jumper that really sealed the deal. And his numbers were brilliant through the entire basketball game. His energy, his courage, his passion. 48 points, the assist, the steal, played all but three seconds. So he led his team to victory. But there's other things, Marv, that happen also too. The keys to victory. They got to get easy points off turnovers. They did. They were plus six there. Some early fast break points. They got those plus seven. A magnificent job on the line, plus eight. The bench came through, plus 14. Matt Geiger scored 10 points off the bench. So what I expect tonight, first of all, what kind of energy? What kind of passion? Will they come in as underdogs and once again play like they did in game one or play like they have the home court with some cushion? If so, they'll be in for a long night, Mark. All right, so coming up, it's game two of the NBA Finals. Shaq and the Lakers looking to get back into the series. Welcome back to the Staples Center here in Los Angeles. Ahmad Rashad along with Kevin, PJ, and Bill. Steve Snapper-Jones is not with us tonight because of a family commitment. Now, one of the interesting things about watching sports is that you get a chance to watch the maturation process of athletes. And there is no better example than Allen Iverson. Since entering the NBA, he has grown up and erased a lot of misconceptions along the way. For me to get people to try to understand me, I had to win. You know, when I was the same person all along, I was just young. When I came into the league, I'm 21 years old, 20 years old, and everybody wanted me to be 30 because of my talent. You know, and it was unfair. They never gave me no room for error. You know, they never gave me any room to, to grow up, you know. But, I mean, I'm glad that I went through all those things because it made me stronger as a person. It made me a better father. It made me a better son. You know, it made me a better teammate. You know, it made me a better husband. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad those things happened to me, because I can say I went through hell, but I learned from it. Kevin, you have watched Allen Iverson throughout his career. What a tremendous athlete. About time people judge him on how he plays basketball, not how he looks. He says, "Look, I'm a great basketball player. Judge my heart. Judge what I do. I got a big heart for a little guy." I'd love to be in a locker room with Allen Iverson going into battle. Not the corn roll, not the tattoo, but his heart is what counts. I went through all this same stuff 30 years ago. I thought we'd already won this battle. Now, as great as Allen Iverson was in game one, Larry Brown told me that there's two critical areas that the Sixers have to get a lot better in. The first one is when the Lakers play the deny defense and keep Iverson from getting possession, they've got to run more backdoor, they have to be more creative and more physical, do some dribble handoff. Iverson has to have his touches. And then when the Lakers power forwards, Horace Grant and Robert Ory, when they come to double team Iverson, and once he has the ball, Tyrone Hill or whoever has the ball in the power forward spot, they have to come and break the play and come and come alive offensively, be a lot more active, PJ. Allen Iverson is no mystery. He is the answer. He's going to be here. I think it's the other half of the Philadelphia backcourt. Lewis Johnson gave us the medical report. Aaron McKee's got to be able to play at both ends, defend Kobe Bryant, and he's got to be the second scorer if Philly's going to be successful again. All right. Uh, right now, let's quickly check in with Peter Vesey, who has some coaching news. Peter. Ahmad, uh, news out of Cleveland says that uh, Bob Hill has emerged as the leading candidate for that coaching vacancy. And in Portland, Chuck Daly's name has surfaced as a leading candidate. Apparently, he's expressed interest in the last couple weeks. And if they're looking for a guy who's an expert on crisis management, he is the guy. But the big news, Ahmad, uh, revolves around your guy, uh, Michael Jordan. Isaiah Thomas called me today and told me that he worked out full court with Michael in Chicago, and uh, Antoine Walker was guarding Jordan for most of the afternoon, and uh, Isaiah came away uh, greatly impressed with, with how uh, he's bulked up, he's in great shape. He says that he continues his training, not just practicing, but the weight training, you know, eating right, stopping the smoking, the drinking, whatever, that this guy can actually come back and be the same Michael Jordan. But I'm sure you're not surprised about that, are you, Omar? <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Peter. But Isaiah working out with Michael, Maybe Isaiah's coming back. Who knows? We're closing in on game two of the finals.
finals. And to many people's surprise, the Sixers have a one-game lead. But head coach Larry Brown would prefer a different format. I just wish this was the final four and it's one and done. You go home, you have a parade, and everything's done. finished. If there is to be a parade in Philadelphia, it's still three wins away. We'll be back with a tip-off of game two in just a moment. at Staples in Los Angeles for the first time in the last 20 games in 69 days. The Lakers now find themselves answering questions about a loss as they seek to even up this series at one apiece. Uh, check of the starting lineups for the Sixers. Tyrone Hill, Jermaine Jones, Dikembe Mutombo up front, Adel Iverson, Aaron McKee in the backcourt. The Lakers with the usual starting five. Rick Fox, Horace Grant, Shaquille O'Neal on the front line, Kobe Bryant, Derek Fisher in the backcourt. Let's check in with Jim Gray. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Marv. A few moments ago, I spoke to Shaquille O'Neal, and he said there is a reason that no one has ever done it before. You can't win every game. He said the key is now that we've lost is how do we react? He said early in the game, we're going to establish Kobe. We're going to get him gone, and he's going to go right after McKee. I asked him what he thought about Phil Jackson saying that possibly the team psyche had been dented. He said maybe Phil's has been dented. Mine has not. Marv? Jack using his head coach for motivation. <laughs> Doug, what's the Laker mindset going into tonight? I think they're going to have tremendous energy, and I think what you're going to see is what we saw in game one against San Antonio. Maybe a lot of screen rolls with Kobe and Shaq, making Matumbo show out, getting Kobe to the basket, or Kobe running down to that post and trying to post up. Aaron McKee is so important to this team. I think they're going to find out early how mobile he really is. The officials, Ernie Fryer, Steve Jabby and Ronnie Dunn. Allen Iverson coming off an extraordinary game here on Wednesday night. And he played nearly the entire 53 minutes of the overtime. They are much more into this game than they were in game one. They understand the magnitude of this. Kobe Bryant, Horace Grant with Tyrone Hill right up on him. Derek Fisher had difficulty locating shots the other night. Here's Shaq trying to go glass from deep. 76ers hope to prevent Shaq from setting up in that deep position. Able to take advantage. The other night, here's McKee off the dribble, beating Kobe, but uh, obviously not able to make the move. Iverson fires for three, and O'Neal with the rebound, guns it down. Here's Fisher, fouled by McKee. Well, when you struggle like Derek Fisher did in game one, what do you do? You want to get something easy. And he leaked out on the fast break after the long jumper, got a hand in Iverson's face. No one covered back. Here he goes strong to the basket, gets the foul on McKee. More importantly, a couple free throws. Now, Marv, you got a chance to walk up there quickly, see that ball go in the basket, start that feeling once again that you had against San Antonio. Fisher did not go to the line at all. The other night, Phil Jackson was telling us yesterday that he felt the Lakers had a conditioning problem in game one. He said even Shaq had a, had a problem with energy. He said Derek Fisher looked a step slow on Iverson in game one. That's why he came back for the most part with Teron Liu, did a terrific job for a spell on Iverson. I thought this, uh, the Lakers had great energy the first six minutes, and then I thought that conditioning caught up with him. Derek Fisher just closes right out on top of him. You see the elbow being thrown out. You're not allowed to create space with that off arm. So Derek Fisher off to a good start. A couple free throws, a nice defensive possession. He's got to be feeling much better, Mark. Here's Kobe with his first. Kobe Bryant went 52 minutes in game one, but just seven for 22, 15 points, and he turned it over six times. McKee from a tumbo met on a switch by Bryant and foul. Oh, 
Kobe is so vital to this team. When he hits this outside jump shot, you've got to close on him. Then he can beat you with a penetration. The other night, he could not hit the jumper, so they were able to get a hand in his face. Mark, interestingly enough, he took 22 shots the other night, shot only one free throw. That was the technical on Phil Jackson, so they did a great job. McKee and Iverson committed one foul the entire game in 102 minutes. Tonight, they already have two. And the Laker foul on Fox. The trouble five for seven at the line the other night. And they recall he missed two important free throws. And as it turned out, his teammates were able to bail him out. No one's talking about those foul shots. At the time, the Sixers had hit 19 in a row. Oh, Fisher! Oh, Fisher of Glover getting the step, and the Lakers now lead 6 to 2. Jones coming to the ball. Jermaine Jones. Shaq to the outlet. Bryant played by Jones. Open shot for Grant. Oh. Horace was 3 for 11 in game one. That was ugly. Oh, that was lucky. That could have been nice. Iverson's second mark. Crowd wanted another offensive foul. But Key takes it strong to the rim. Looks like his foot's okay right now, Marv. I do not see any uh, ill effects that we'll have to see as he gets tired what will happen. Earlier, it looked like he did not want to pivot when he had a shot opportunity, gave the ball up. Shaq had it knocked away, but able to regain possession. Here's Kobe. Iverson checking the floor. Look to put the move on Fisher. Hill on the follow. No one boxing out for the Lakers. Well, when Iverson goes to the basket and takes the shot, all eyes go to him, and the Sixers are trained. Go to the basket, get an offensive rebound. That is a real key for them. Game tied at six. Here's Bryant. Draws the foul. That's a rare opening for Kobe Bryant. The foul was called on Tyrone Hill. There's the play right there that Allen Iverson looked like he could have picked up his second foul. He didn't. And then Aaron McKee took advantage of it as he drove the ball to the basket and got the layup. So that's a critical non-call. And then Allen Iverson, you know, Marv, sometimes you're going to laugh, but I, I think sometimes these are almost like assists. He brings so many people to him that if they'll go to the offensive boards, it's almost like he's passing to them on their missed shots. So, you know, he'll take 30 shots, maybe miss 20 of them, but if his team can rebound seven, eight, nine of those, then it's almost like an assist because they'll either get to the free throw line or, or like that, lay the ball back in the basket. I would never laugh. <laughs> well, I had to preface that. That was X and O humor. <laughs> Lakers eight and the Sixers six. We played three minutes on this opening quarter. Fisher going chest to chest with Iverson was able to whip by. Iverson thought he was fouled. Key setting the offense. Matumbo, how about that? Kelly Matumbo with the medium range jumper. Now we saw that from Matt Geiger the other night. He hit five jumpers. You do not expect that from Dikembe. Good hustle by Jones to get back. And here comes McKee. Iverson wide open for three. So Iverson old for his first four. But as we have seen on a number of occasions, these streaks do not matter when you're talking about Allen Iverson. Well, he's going to take 35 shots, so he will not stop shooting, and he must keep shooting because his teammates expect those shots. Shot clock at five. Shaquille O'Neal with his first field goal. The Lakers up by two. You recall the quick start for the Lakers in game one when they led by as many as 13 in the first half. Fisher called for the foul. They were, they were off and running 18 to 5 at one point. Larry Brown said he was very happy when the first quarter score was 23 22 right at the end of the quarter. Well, this is the campaign. What he wants him to do is force Shaquille to shoot that little jump shot. No dunks, no layups. We saw in the third quarter of the night he had 18 and Mark seven of his field goals were right in the lane in the basket area. Iverson amused by Derek Fisher's defensive work and deflected out by Hill. 
It looks like what the Lakers are doing defensively is any penetration they're running Horace Grant over as a shot blocker and keeping uh, Shaq back there to be the rebounder. If Shaq goes to block the shots, they'll get hurt on the offensive board. So let's keep watching that, Marv. You think Phil Jackson made the point to uh, Derek Fisher? That's last touch by the Sixers. As he did to us, I think you were a step slow the other day. <laughs> well, you know what? Derek Fisher has such uh, personal pride. He got up early the day after the game, shot for an hour before his teammates got to the gym. He was here tonight early shooting, and he's got some early results for it. Bryant. Fox. And here's Shaq. Foul is called. <laughs> Steve Javi. Oh, the call on the top of, he thought it was going the other way. He was applauding the call made by Javi. Mark, what's the end of this play? Watch Shaquille O'Neal bang into Rick Fox. I think Fox gets a feeling of what it's like to play against Shaq, but watch him as he starts to go up. He just rocks him back. Wonder what in the world hit me. Fox for three. Iverson on the crossover. <laughs> Game tied at 10. Here's Fox trying to hand it off to O'Neal. Iverson behind the back to set it up for three. Jermaine Jones from downtown. That is when the Sixers can really strike. They will get you in the open court and run, and it's difficult for the Lakers to get to their shooters. This is exactly what we saw in game one, Mark, when the Sixers made their run. They did it by running, by getting a layup like Allen Iverson did. That crossover takes it between three guys off the glass, kisses it in, and then once again running again, the little behind-the-back no-look pass. Jermaine Jones spots up, buries the three. The Sixers lead by three, and Larry Brown has to be very happy at their start. They're playing with a lot of energy. A defensive work against him. What well, looked like he poked him. Yes, he was amused by what he felt was a non-call. Here's the explanation from Steve Javi. Now, if, I, if I see the play, I'm going to call it. I didn't see it, all right? Now, now, if I see it, it goes like that. I'm going to call it on it, all right? I can't see everything, Alan. I feel too much pushing. I think Alan Iverson also shows you, Marv, he's the kind of guy that's really not going to lose his composure. He's going to play with great energy, but he understands the importance of keeping his patience and composure. He talked to Steve Javi. Now he's got to get back to playing, which he normally does. The 76ers with a 13-4 run to take the lead. Last touch by Philadelphia. 11 on the shot clock for Los Angeles. Both teams remaining the same following the timeout. Kobe draws the double, so it frees up. Grant rejected by the top of Shaq is fouled. And a good foul by Jermaine Jones. But here's what happens. Kobe goes into post. They're sending Tyrone Hill down to double team. Here he comes. So now when he, uh, you got Horace Grant diving, here comes Matumbo to block the shot. But when he leaves Shaquille O'Neal, there is nobody to block him out. So more of a double team creates a chain reaction. Matumbo has to go over. Now this man is on, on the board by himself. Let's see what his free throw looks like this evening. Oh, 10 for 22 the other night. And... We look at the the rest of the club overall the the Lakers 15 for 27 the 12 misses all by Shaq and for the first time in many weeks Shaq's work at the foul line is significant and he is back into the funk that we saw in the first half of the season. Well they've blown everybody out in the playoffs so much that that didn't even become a factor Well, it did the other night and it really hurt them. McKee on the foul line, stopped by O'Neal. The stuff, and it will be Laker ball. Again, the, the second shot to the Sixers. This is what they do so well because normally they don't shoot a high percentage. The Kimbe just bangs that ball off the back of the rim. Beautiful move by Kobe Bryant to set up the short jumper. Six points for Kobe. The Lakers only four for 13 from the field. They're down by one. The key with the step. Nice play. And the tumble is taken down. The foul is called. Sixers want a flagrant. 
The officials discussing it. Ronnie Nunn, Steve Javi, Bernie Fryer huddling up. Well, the Sixers can ill afford another injury. Dribble penetration. Here comes Shaq. Horace Grant comes over, takes the hard foul. And as the referees talk it over, we'll have to figure out whether or not it's a flagrant. But when you get inside, again, here comes the defense. Slow on the reaction is Rick Fox. Tumbo goes hard to the basket and gets the foul. So it appears that it's only going to be a two-shot foul, not a flagrant one. Problem there is Dikembe rubbing that right shoulder. We'll have to watch that as the game goes, Marv. This has been a team that has been hard hit by injuries to Kevin Matumbo playing with that broken left pinky the injury suffered in the series against Toronto foul was called on Horace Grant. Kevin has turned himself into a free throw shooter and now that is three for three here in the first quarter at the line for Matumbo. <laughs> That's a look before. <laughs> Tonight's game. Doug, you Mark, prepared no, no. the same matter. I was getting ready to say that looked like you before the telecast. You beat me to it. <laughs> now a change on that foul call. Rick Fox, rather than uh, Horace Grant, announced uh, on the public address is picking up the personal. And the Sixers now lead 15-12. Well, I think if you're a Sixer fan right now, you have to be very happy. They have come out and they they are playing once again as underdogs with that passion that we talked about. Will they be able to sustain it for 48 minutes? Kobe played well by uh, McKee Fisher, not able to relocate the touch from downtown. He was 15 of 20 from three-point land of the series against San Antonio. The 15 threes, a record NBA record for a four-game series. Matumbo. And back comes Fox. Here's Fisher with the step. The Lakers continue to struggle. Fox got hit in the head. Served up for Iverson, but off the mark. Rick Fox is hurt. Here's Bryant. Yes. Remember the other night, Rick Fox landed on his head off a collision. He's shaken up again. And uh, indicating to the bench that he's all right. Timeout is called by the Sixers with 4.38 remaining in the first. And the Sixers up by one point. Well, you see the collision as Rick Fox went for the steal. Looked like he got hit in the back of the head. He laid down on the floor. The Sixers turned the ball over on a break. And Kobe comes right down. This is one of the cleanest looks he's had in both games. He knocks in the jumper. He's off to a great start. The Lakers trail by one. Start physically for both teams. Lots of bumps and bruises. This is something the Sixers have become accustomed to. They could qualify for weekly drama series. And Doug here in Hollywood, as you know, anything's possible. Philadelphia's Liberty Bell has a fracture. <laughs> you have really been working I, on I'm your sorry. material on the day off, haven't you? <laughs> Sixers by one. And they head to the lead. Allen Iverson with a second field goal. Now two for seven. He has four points. Philadelphia with a 17-14 advantage. Eric Snow has checked in for the first time, as has Brian Shaw. Here's Fisher. Trying to shoot his way back into it. You know, Marv, I, th I think when Larry Brown took that timeout, he was just trying to calm his team down. They got a little bit scattered on the break, made a couple turnovers. They come out of the timeout, get a nice jump shot. McKinney rejected following the penetration. Bryant. So Kobe is four for seven, ten points, and the 76er lead is one. Eric Snow hit the game winner on Wednesday night. A 
thoughts about that shot uh, with uh, Eric yesterday. I said, is that something you practice on a regular basis with a runner? He claims he does. Nice entry pass as Shaq is able to get down deep and is fouled by Matumbo. <laughs> a fast break it's Kobe coming down the floor pulling up and hitting the jump shot and then another next time down the floor a stop once again look how deep the post position you cannot stop Shaq when he gets it that deep so right now the Lakers combo that one two punch really starting to get back in sync after that layoff Shaq at the line out of sync 0 for 3 at the foul I'm a tumble collecting a second foul is replaced by Matt Geiger who played 14 minutes in game one, five for seven from the field, 10 points. He did foul out Matt Geiger, who has certainly heard the criticism concerning series of injuries during the course of the season. Shaquille hears it from the crowd as hits a free throw. Geiger's minutes have been limited, coming back from a tear of the right quadricep. But a major contributor the other night. Crowd wanted a double dribble call on Iverson. That shot deflected short. And a loose ball foul against the 76ers. It's on Tyrone Hill. The Sixers are over the foul limit. Well, as the Sixers have gone to their bench, Matt Geiger is in. Now, the other night, we know that he really struggled trying to play against Shaq. Shaq had 18 points in the third quarter, a lot of them when Matumbo went out with fouls. Hard the other night in the game, Matumbo, when he was in the game, they were a plus 14. When he was out, they were a minus 8. When he sits down, their defense really gets hurt. So what does Matt Geiger have to do? He's got to make some of those jump shots to at least try to counteract Shaq somewhat, who's going to try to post him up every time he gets a chance. Well, Shaquille is now one for five at the line. Todd McCullough now checks in for Tyrone Hill. You can log on to NBCSports.com as Steve Jones looks at the keys to how the Sixers can beat the Lakers again. Plus, Matt Lucas with an in-depth preview of every game of the finals, including his X Factor for each contest, all at NBCSports.com. So Shaquille O'Neal, one for six for the field. And he has got three of his last 14 at the line. I should say one for six at the line. Boy, Allen Iverson, that's about the fourth time now he looks like he's got hit in the face. Oh, he kept it stripped by Shaq. Third block shot for Shaquille O'Neal. The line up. Matumbo. This is exactly what happened the other night. Dikembe knows he has to stay out of foul trouble. You know where the Lakers are heading now again this period. Lakers up 19-17 as we come up on two minutes to go. And the first. Iverson for three. Bryant using the pick. Bryant to the rim. Rebounded by McCullough. <laughs> Snow pushing it. Leads McKee. Iverson from downtown. You know, it, it looks like the Lakers are winning this game. It looks like they're dominating inside. When you look up the scoreboard, the Sixers are up one. They're really an amazing team, Marv. They just keep hanging in there and competing against you. It's not always pretty, but it is effective. They do not go away as the Milwaukee Bucks can attest to. We used the example the other night. Grant is hammered by McCullough. Perhaps more impressive than any 76er victory was game six when they came from 33 down, hung in, and cut the deficit to 10, although they lost the game. Well, and it was this guy in that fourth period, Allen Iverson, who had 26 points. He said that was one of the reasons why they were able to win game seven. He got into a rhythm, ended up getting 44 in that game, had 70 in a five-quarter period of time. So we know he's capable of striking and striking quickly. Marv, you'll go through stretches where he might not score for nine minutes. And they might score 20 points in a quarter because he's going to be relentless, fearless, and he's going to keep coming at you. One of the 76er heroes from game one, Roger Bell, has checked in for the first time. He 
had the most memorable bucket. There's uh, Shaq getting a rest. The most memorable field goal uh, in that overtime. Well, they were dead in the water, down five. Shot clock winding down. No way to score, and he weaves in there with that left hand. Look out. Derek Fisher lands in the first row. <laughs> and uh, here's an up close and personal from the crowd. But Mark, just to finish that up, Roger Bell hits that big shot, makes it three, and then Iverson goes on his seven-point run. But Derek Fisher, emotionally in this game, he really struggled in game one, never got into a rhythm after being spectacular against the Spurs. They really need him. He's that third guy they need on the floor to be the scorer. Iverson for the crossover and lost his footing. Deflected out. Last touch by Robert Orr. Phil Jackson has a front line of Grant, Ori, and Bryant at the small forward. Where everywhere Allen Iverson goes, he draws two or three guys. Referees rule the ball was tipped. Sixers re uh, regain possession. Here's Bell. The box out by Ori. Coming up on one minute remaining. In the first, Lakers in possession. They lead by one. Grant setting the screen. Nice uh, screen and roll. Beautifully between Horace Grant and Kobe Bryant. See, Todd McCullough does not have the foot speed to be able to show and get back on that play. And that's what I thought they would do more of tonight. Screen roll, try to stretch that sixer defense. Geiger. Yes. Matt Geiger. Five of seven in game one. Hits on his first field goal attempt. And the Lakers are up 23-22. Bryant being played by Bell. Kobe on fire. 12 points in this first quarter for Kobe Bryant. Well, Kobe normally does his game day interviews with us, Mark. Tonight he declined. He had that game face on early, and he is coming out and has been brilliant here to start this game tonight. Foul on, on Shaw. Lakers had a foul to give. This is the screen. Now watch McCullough. He's going to come out here, and here comes Kobe. And on the roll, you've got to have somebody step in. Look where Matt Geiger is. He's got to be the guy to get there. He is slow getting there because he's concerned about Robert Ory shooting the basketball. And next time, Kobe comes down, and he's in that rhythm now. He's getting distance with that little jab step, pulls up and shoots that jump shot. So as expected, Jim Gray talked about it to start the game. They're going to go to Kobe early, and he's delivered. Rodney Buford, who did not play at all in game one, has checked in as the Sixers hold for a final shot of this opening quarter. Three-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. One on the 24. McKee, yes! Aaron McKee with three and four-tenths seconds to go in the quarter. Now Shaw battles to get it on court. After one of game two of this NBA final series, it's the Lakers 25 and the Sixers 24. Kobe Bryant five for nine for the field. He has 12 points. Shaquille with five. Only one of six at the line. He does have three block shots and Allen Iverson just three for nine. 24 from the field. In the first quarter, the Lakers up 25-24. Snow and Iverson at the backcourt. Bell up front with McCullough and Geiger. And a foul on the Lakers. It's on Teron Lee, uh, Lou, who just uh, checked in. Well, it's Lou now trying to shadow Iverson like he did in game one. Allen Iverson said he was holding me in game one. Well, that time he was <laughs> holding me, and he gets called for the personal foul. One of the heroes for the Lakers in game number one. What a move by Eric Snow going high off glass for his first field goal. Now, Mark, when there's a sign of rust or when your conditioning is down, you turn the basketball over. Game one, the Lakers turned over 19 times. Tonight, only one. They're sharper. You can see it. The 76ers' defense is still the same, but the Lakers' offense is much crisper right now. They're taking care of the basketball. Todd McCullough picks up his second foul to Kempe Matumbo. Sitting down after collecting his second late in the first quarter. Now Larry Brown patched a front line together here with uh, Tumbo getting the rest along with Hill. Nice jump by O'Neal. So Shaq 
three of four from the field. He has seven, and the Lakers have a one-point lead. Marty, you make a great point. How much time can Larry Brown buy from a tumble? How close can they stay so he does not get in foul trouble tonight? McCullough deep on the post against O'Neal. He was waved off by Roger Bell. Here's Snow in a crowd. Well, you're looking at a sixer front line of Tom McCullough, Matt Geiger, and Roger Bell. Shaw throwing that lob. Bryant trying to draw the foul. This is Roger Bell leading Tom McCullough. When you take a bad shot, the 76ers are going to run back at you. Kobe took a difficult shot. Phil Jackson not happy with that. And the Sixers right back down the floor and laying the ball in the basket. That's how they're winning this game right now. Todd McCullough, seven-footer with excellent hands. Second-round draft pick last year by way of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Good hustle by Orr. Shaw. And Iverson on the ball. Iverson putting moves on Shaw, setting up the fade away. Oh, uh-oh. Allen Iverson with a gorgeous behind-the-back maneuver. He has nine points, and you sense he is getting into it. He put on so many moves there, Brian Shaw couldn't even react. <laughs> <laughs> I flinched twice. I did too. Oh, nice setup. Robert Murray with his first field goal, and the Sixers now lead 30 to 29. And McCullough doesn't have the foot speed to stay with Ori. He's been beat on an offensive rebound and a cut. Larry Brown's going to have to keep his eye on that matchup. Here's Geiger. glass. Little ball fake by Shaq. Roger Bell did a nice defensive job the other night against Kobe Bryant. Bell with it. McCullough beats the Lakers down court. You don't have to be fast to run on a fast break. That's two for McCullough. You just have to want to be able to run the floor. Sometimes you won't get it. But when you do, you deliver. That's great play by McCullough. And this crowd starting to get impatient. The Lakers are down by three after losing game one in overtime. And, Marv, this is all that series of moves. Brian Shaw said, where is he? Iverson steps back, hits a very difficult shot on the fast break. And then Todd McCullough, probably if you'd run a foot race, he might not be able to beat you or I, Marv, but you know what? Well, he's running the floor, and he's got two layups, and as a result, his team leads by three. These aerial pictures, courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in Carson, California. Goodyear currently operates six airships, three in the U.S., two in Europe, one in South America. But you knew all that, Doug. <laughs> yeah. Sixers have taken a three-point lead. Allen Iverson continues to question why no foul calls on the physical play on the part of the Lakers. I'm not going to see everything, all right? They have going to turn out. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, but why you, why you like, no, I'm telling you, if I see something's a foul, I'm going to blow the whistle, all right? I'm just trying to say, stay in your game. I'll stay in the mind. Let's go. I'm in the right? game. Stay I'm, in I'm, the trying, finals, I'm trying to be in the mind, too. I want to try to make every call right. I'm not going to be right, unfortunately, 100% of the time. All right, just, I'm just saying, why well, smack me in my face? Right? I will. Hey, you I got it. Such a rational explanation from the official, Steve well, Javi. What you can see is Derek Fisher is using the one hand and trying to get it in Iverson's face to disrupt his vision. Iverson said, you know what, I've been hit three times now. Please watch it. Iverson. Yes. And Teron Lue was all over him. A series of crossovers setting up the shot for Iverson, who now has 11, and the Sixers lead by five. Offensive foul. Rick Fox pushing out, picks up his third. Larry Brown loves to front in front of the uh, low post with his defense, but Allen Iverson on this play, that little pullback, he takes the ball between his legs to create distance, and he's hit two very difficult shots in a row. Starting to get that look on his face of why he was the MVP. This guy has got so much energy. Kobe Bryant has made his return 0 for 3. 
from the field uh, in the second quarter. McKee for McCullough. And he draws the foul. And Todd McCullough has emerged as a presence for the Sixers here in the second quarter as Matt Geiger did back in game one. Well, we talked about the bench scoring. It was 29 to 15 in game one, plus 14 for the 76ers. You can already see what Todd McCullough has done in a seven minute period of time. He has four points. More importantly, the better he and Geiger play, it allows the Kimbe Matumbo to stay over on that bench with only two fouls. So this is critical time that the Sixers are getting this kind of production from their bench players. McCullough just a 64% free throw shooter during the regular season. Let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis? All right, Marv, thanks. You know we documented Aaron McKee's chip fracture in his ankle, but during the last time out, he had a heating pad on his left quadricep. I've been told by the trainers he has an actual strain. He's trying to play through it right now, but we're going to look at it again at halftime, and we'll follow up in the third quarter. Marv? All right, Lewis, uh, McKee remaining on the floor. Kevin Ali has checked in for the first time in the... Sixers take a timeout off the pressure defense shown by the Lakers. 7.32 remaining. First half, and Philadelphia leads by four. Kobe Bryant has gotten off to an excellent start, but one thing the Lakers don't want him to do is get too anxious and too excited and start forcing shots. You can see on this play, he's got two guys playing him, and you take a look, three guys out on the perimeter, really only Shaq back in the play. Kobe takes a very difficult shot. His teammates are watching, and this is what Phil Jackson does not want to happen, where he does not want Kobe to take a too much a personal attack to try to beat these 76ers. He ends up on the seat of his pants. They run out and get a layup. And let's uh, check in with Jim Gray for a report on the Lakers. All right, uh, you're exactly right. That's what Phil Jackson told Kobe Bryant. He said, I know you're playing hard, Kobe, but you got to wait for the rest of the guys. You can't play offensively with everybody behind you. Then he told the entire team, hey, guys, don't look at the scoreboard. Relax. Let the game come to you. Quit chasing it. Mark. All right, thanks, Jim. Kobe is 5 for 12 from the field. Brian Shaw just picked up his second foul. Lakers with their third team foul. I think what the Sixers are hoping to do is just stay in touch here with the Lakers. Just just keep it close and see if that energy, that emotion will come them to crack late in the game, knowing this is a must-win game for them, Mark. Uh, here's McKee from down the town. Aaron McKee playing with that chip fracture in his right ankle. Three of four from the field. He has seven points, and the 76ers with their biggest lead of the night. Ori shooting. Second field goal. Well, Robert Ory's trying to make up for that offensive foul. He got an overtime. Very costly for his team. They were up five, had the ball a little over two minutes to go. Committed the offensive foul. His team that outscored 13 to 2 from that point, and they lost. A bad play by Ory really cost his team the other night. Geiger with the fake. Here's Ali. Geiger. McCullough tips it home. How about Tom McCullough? He has seven points. The Sixers up by seven. Six and a half remaining in the first half and a foul on Geiger. The 76ers are a terrific offensive rebounding team. The ball goes inside. Ali takes a tough shot. There is Geiger with one tip. The ball slightly off the rim. McCullough, tip, McCullough tips the ball in. So Todd McCullough getting a rest as is Geiger. And these guys did a tremendous job. They have gone in the, and the Sixers now lead by seven with Matumbo sitting on the uh, bench with fouls, Marv. Matumbo back along with Hill. Matumbo has the uh, two personals. Here's the double on Shaq. Beautiful pass. Shaq out of the for the putback. Shaquille is so tough in game one on, on putbacks. Larry Brown was telling us the other day what a sensational answer Shaq has become out of the post. Well, I think in that triangle offense, he knows where his cutters and his players are. He feels very familiar where the double teams are coming from. Back comes Bryant. Shaq has 11, and the Sixer lead is now three. Oh, that's a great play. Kobe brought the entire defense over when he saw Matumbo. He knew his partner Shaq was going to be wide open. The 
McKee changed his mind as he saw Shaquille. Got clock at four. Here's McKee for three. The box out by O'Neal, keeping Hill away. A great defensive sequence. Lakers scrambling, getting a, a hand in the face. More importantly, that big defensive rebound. And rebounds for Shaquille. Little actually lost it. Holly not looking to shoot. Wide open. Gives it right back. Iverson. And Iverson is fouled. Now this is the patience that Phil Jackson wants from Kobe Bryant. Survey the floor, penetrate. Find Shaq, and that is a very, very high percentage shot. But again, probe the defense, bring everybody to you. Then drop off with a beautiful no-look pass and a powerful finish. And the hand you hear now is for Ron Harper coming in for, looks like Teron Lou's going to get a break. Harper has been really sidelined almost the entire playoffs with a knee injury. And Phil wants him to come in and just sort of stabilize his team for a few minutes. Harper did not play at all in game one. Whoa, Eric Snow way off. Eric Hopper played for Larry Brown earlier in his career with the uh, Los Angeles Clippers. Here's Kobe. Jack. With 13 points, 11 rebounds, and the Sixer lead is down to one. Jackson looking for a steady influence. That's why he wants to dump with Harper out on the court. Harper coming back from the arthroscopic knee surgery. We've already seen Fisher on Iverson, Lou on Iverson, now Kobe. Three different looks. Now Kobe is bigger. He can get up, and what he's going to do is try to bother him from behind if he looks to take the shot, run him into the double team, and get a lot of help. Remember now, Two years ago, Kobe held him scoreless in the second half of a game in Philadelphia that the Lakers won on the road, so he knows how to defend a little bit against Iverson. McKee from downtown. Ten points for McKee. That's his second three. And the Sixers lead at 43-39. Philadelphia now four for seven from beyond the three-point line. Robert Ory attempted that three, kept alive by Bryant. Kobe Keeping the Lakers alive right now, Marv, is that offensive backboard. Both of these teams, excellent offensive rebounding teams. Kobe gets an offensive rebound and a score. We've seen Shaq get a couple. Philadelphia's got a defensive rebound that ball. Bad of defense from the crowd here at Staples. Iverson beats Bryant off the dribble. Rebound always played well. Second violation is gone. What kind of poise and patience now will the Sixers have as we start to make this little run to the halftime? We see Larry Brown talking to his team, calling out a set play. 3-11 here to go, Marv. They're up two. It's a critical time as the Lakers are trying to make a surge here going into half. McKee over Harper. Snatched by O'Neal. Wide open for three. Lakers not able to hit from downtown. The tumble thought he was fouled. Iverson on the wing. Iverson. Coming up on two and a half remaining in this first half. Lakers with the ball down by two. And this crowd urging the Lakers on. Shot. Shaq 
So the Lakers have come from behind. They now lead 45-43. Anytime the Sixers miss, Shaq is leaking out as quickly as he can to get down the floor and going right to the front of the rim. That quick, deep pass, and Matumbo can't defend that. Iverson splits his way, gives it back. Snow. Yes. And the game is tied at 45. We're approaching one minute left in the first half. Lakers swing it. Hopper for three. O'Neal had it slapped away. And Snow bothered by Grant. Popped it up. This has been a frenetic pace. Both teams looking to run whenever they can. Missed shots, offensive rebounds, passion and energy. And we're tied. Some tense moments before and after the taping of that Lucas Lynch segment. A moment ago, the 76ers were called on the turnover. Let's uh, take another look. Looks, well, looks to be off Kobe Bryant. Yeah, and Eric Snow looked over at the official, said it went off Kobe's foot. That's not what was called. So the Lakers will have the basketball a minute to go. And or you just sense the urgency now in the Lakers has realized these Sixers are not going to go away. And Phil Jackson staying with the veteran Rod Hopper. Nice play, Hopper with the field goal. Rod Hopper has made it back from arthroscopic surgery on his left knee. Missed the final 34 games of the regular season, and so only limited action. First three rounds of the playoffs. Lakers up by two. But Hopper's in there for his defense against the key. He was able to slap it away. Geiger on the recovery. Here's Iverson with a shot clock running down. Sure with the outlet. The key back for Bryant. When you take long jump shots, the 76ers have got to get back. The Lakers are releasing on the jump shooter. Nobody rotating back. That's the third time we've seen that in the game. The Lakers by four. A 16-5 run by Los Angeles. Final seconds of the first half. Down to two. Down to one. Here's Geiger. Going glass. It will count. Matt Geiger at the hole. Well, a terrific first half of basketball. Coming off the improbable overtime win in game one by the Sixers. Matt Geiger able to cap it off as this first half came to a conclusion and the Lakers lead 49-47. Let's throw it over to Jim Gray. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Marv. 16 points for Kobe Bryant in the first half. Kobe, you guys have not been in a must-win situation in an awful long time. Are you guys sensing the urgency? It feels good. It feels good. It's a humongous challenge. They're so competitive and they play so hard, but it feels good to be tested. Phil Jackson said during one of the timeouts, you guys are not relaxing. You're chasing the game. Is he right? Well, I think there was a certain stretch there where we're overly aggressive. Uh, I think our emotions got the best of us, but we're able to settle back in the game and start executing our offense. Kobe, thank you. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, Mark, back to you. Thank you, Jim. Kobe with 16. Shaq, 17 points, 13 rebounds. Iverson, 5 for 14, 11 points in the first half. Stay tuned for net zero for half. Amon Coming up with PJ and Kevin, first half analysis, as well as a very special edition of The Weakest Link featuring Bob Costas and Bill Walton. You're watching the NBA Finals on NBC. Welcome back to Los Angeles, California. Marv Albert, Doug Collins, Jim Gray, Lewis Johnson. As we head to the second half, the Lakers with a 49-47 lead. On the 76ers, Philadelphia 41% for the field in that first half. And the Lakers at 45% on 21 for 47. Doug, I think Bob Cost is still sulking <laughs> from his appearance oh, on the weekend. I can only now. imagine what he was like walking off that stage. The thing about Bob is, you know, he did not take it personally. <laughs> Allen Iverson working on Derek Fisher as this third quarter gets underway. Yes! 
13 points now for Iverson, shooting just six for 16. But he is a guy who can erupt at any time. I think the key there is he attempted no free throws in that first half, so the Lakers did not foul him on any of the tough shots that he took. Nice pass from Shaq. Grant blows the lead. Horace Grant has been struggling. Horace just one for six from the field. The game tied at 49. Oh, Fisher with an aggressive play, but knocked it out of bounds. Mark, when you look at that first half, the Lakers were in the lead. I think one of the reasons they led in fast break points 13 to 5, that was not the case in game one. So the Lakers are doing a good job running off the Sixer misses. Transition defense must be better by the Sixers. Iverson. Matumbo. And the foul is called. What a move by, by Iverson. Oh, the double team to set it up for Matumbo. And O'Neal commits his first. Well, it's almost like you think you've got him blocked off. But there's no place for him to go. And he sort of slinks along that baseline. Gets into traffic. And finds the wide open Dikembe Matumbo. Now Matumbo got to the line in that first half bar four times. The rest of the team only twice. That is a real key stat. When the 76ers make 20-plus free throws, they are tough to beat. They made 23 in game one. Now let's check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis? Well, Marv, another injury report concerning the Philadelphia 76ers, and it concerns Matumbo, who sometime in the first half suffered a gash, a cut in his tongue. Now, I'm told that the trainers tried to give him stitches in the locker room at the halftime, but he refused, so he'll have the stitches put in after the game. Marv? Morris Grant ties it at 51. And can't be playing with that broken left pinky, the, the injury sustained in the series against the Raptors. Iverson and McKee in the backcourt. Matumbo up front with Jones and Hill. Iverson for three. Kobe Bryant putting balls on Aaron McKee and draws the foul. See, that's exactly what happens when the 76ers miss a jump shot. They can't get their defense back down the floor, and the Lakers are really looking to attack. P.J. Colismo talked about it at halftime. When the 76ers are scoring, they can get their defense set. When they're not shooting the ball well, the Lakers are attacking them. 13 fast break points in the first half, and you see it once again right here in the third period, looking to get out on that break. Point number 17 for Kobe Bryant. Let's go over to Jim Gray, Jim. All right, thanks, Marv. During halftime, uh, Phil Jackson told his team, I want to stay positive, guys, about the only thing I can say is we won both quarters by one point. Slow down. Don't be so frenetic. I asked Rick Fox about it. He said part of the reason we're so frenetic is we haven't had to win a game in a must-win situation since last year's finals against Indiana. That's part of the problem. Marv? Well, they are certainly in a desperate scenario right here. This is a Laker team that had won 19 in a row the last eight of the regular season, then 11 of 11, first three rounds of the playoffs. Last touch by the Lakers. They swept by Portland in three, Sacramento in four, San Antonio in four before losing to the 76ers on, on Wednesday night. Shot clock at four, Iverson. shot and releasing and nobody is rotating back to the 76ers. Larry Brown cannot be happy about that. The guards must protect the backcourt. Lakers lead by four. Matumbo. Nice move. A step back. Baseline jumper by Dikembe Matumbo. Well, you know, just to follow up on the thought there by Rick Fox, when he talked about the sense of urgency here and the pressure on the Lakers, the longer the Sixers stick around, the more pressure goes on the Lakers to win this game. They have to win this game. O'Neal. Rebounded by Hill. A, a Laker team that has had an aura of invincibility around it of their second half play in particular the last four weeks. Matumbo. And it's deflected out by Tyrone Hill. Prior to the defeat here in game one, the last loss by the Lakers was back on the 1st of April, losing to the Knicks here in L.A. 
They have that uh, long layoff. O'Neal. And the Lakers now lead by four. Just before game one, they had not played since May the 27th, and Phil Jackson said he was very concerned about the rush factor, and no question the layoff did hurt the uh, Lakers in game one and the, the Sixers with a magnificent performance. Foul is called on Fisher. That's two on Derek Fisher. You see Derek Fisher really getting up and shadowing Iverson, forcing him to try to put this ball on the floor. Just that quick first step, he reach out and gets him with a hand, and that's the foul. Iverson called for the push off. Iverson commits his second. The whole thing with Allen Iverson, you've just got to make him work. You've got to try to frustrate him, and Derek Fisher's done a pretty good job of that. Now, remember Marvin, the first half, he complained to Steve Jabby that three times he got hit in the face by Fisher. He's, he's trying to close out on him on those drives. Bryant, a wonderful move, to his left against Jermaine Jones and hitting on the fadeaway. Now, Sixers have to be very careful right here. They need a good possession. Lakers making a little bit of a push. Kobe has 20, and the Lakers up by six, their biggest lead of the night. Hill on the fake, rejected. Fox on the loose ball. And the Lakers turn it over. Something they have not done much of tonight after 19 turnovers in game one, only four the entire first half. The Sixers had only seven points in the first half off turnovers. But Kobe Bryant, when he elevates, that is a very difficult shot to defend. And Kobe right now is being very comfortable. A nice rhythm shooting that jump shot. Kobe Bryant bouncing back, coming off the 7 of 22 on Wednesday night. Nice give and go, but the key was met by O'Neal that rejected by Bryant. Shot clock at three. Here's McKee. McKee off the hustle. Oh, what a sequence by, by Aaron McKee. If you want to know what the Sixers are all about, that play right there says it all. Aaron McKee just would not give up until he finally got the two points. Bryant. Hill on the rebound. Iverson accelerates and hits Allen Iverson, putting the speed on. And this a team that just refuses <laughs> to go away. Lakers now lead by two. You mentioned that was a dangerous uh, point of this uh, third quarter. They just oh. kept coming back. Well, it looked like they weren't going to score, and McKee makes the great second and third effort to get him two, then Iverson to the layup. But look at Aaron McKee. He gets his first shot blocked. He gets it back. Goes right back at the basket, misses another jump shot, and said, you know what? I'm not quitting. Nobody blocks me out. I'm coming back one more time. He scores. Then Iverson comes right back. The Sixers, when they get on that fast break, Iverson, you just can't keep him from getting to the basket. You've got to be able to get back with two or three guys. So a six-point lead goes down to two that quickly. And the foul call on Tyrone Hill. His fourth, Kobe Bryant. At the line, now five for five from the line. A reminder tomorrow, 5 Eastern, right here on NBC. The exciting conclusion to the Visa Triple Crown, the Belmont Stakes. This will be a test of champions. Freakness winner point given, taking on the Derby winner. And Arcos, the rubber match of the Visa Triple Crown. That's tomorrow, 5 Eastern time on NBC. Six and a half remaining. In the third quarter, and the Lakers lead the Sixers 61-57. The Lakers try to tie the series at one. 76 is trying to go two up with the scene shifting to Philadelphia. 76ers looking for a goal tag. Larry Brown walking the sideline. Allen Iverson are readily accepting the call on the rejection. I think Allen Iverson said that had to be goaltending. That ball was coming down at the basket. Let's take a look here. Ball still on the upward flight, so a good call by the, uh, the officials. Eight on the shot clock. McCullough is five. Todd McCullough did a terrific job in the first half. Played nine minutes and three of four on the field. Seven points through the foul.
on O'Neal for Shaq. It is his second. Well, you can see what Larry Brown has done. Tyrone Hill has struggled, and he has not been any kind of offensive force for them. McCullough is ready for the basketball, any kind of penetration. He's run out on the fast break. So Larry Brown said, look, if the Lakers are going to get out and scramble defensively, I've got to put another offensive threat on the floor, and McCullough has been that guy tonight, Mark. Now Roger Bell has has checked in. Allen Iverson will get a very brief rest. Played nearly the entire overtime in game one. Just three seconds short of the full 53 minutes. And this is the first time that uh, he has sat this evening. Foul is called on, on Bell. Roger Bell is the rookie from the Florida International. Also played a couple of years at Boston University. Signed to him originally to a 10-day contract back in early April. He was in San Antonio and Atlanta's training camp past couple of years, played some CBA, Sioux Falls in the uh, CBA, then the uh, IBL. And has been getting the playing time of the postseason. Well, it all started in that blowout in game six in Milwaukee. He played well. Larry Brown gave him another chance as Kobe works against him. A nice deep chance to force the jumper, but once again, the offensive rebound. And Roger Bell is on the loose ball. Roger Bell in the last couple of games has been a real force. We know of the game seven against Milwaukee, the 10 points, and the big shot in game one here on Wednesday night. The color strip, nice save by Orton. But the Lakers give it right back. Timeout is called by Larry Brown with five and a half to go. In the third, it's the Lakers 61, the Sixers 59. It started off rocky. We had to get to know each other. We had to find out, you know, what we were about, you know, get inside each other's head and really get to understand each other and get to know each other as people instead of coaching player. I didn't have to change him, he changed himself. And he's got the respect of all of us. And he realized that, you know, he needed to do things and uh, he's done it. That in itself is the nicest thing about being here, is to see how far he's come. Well, you can see just moments ago, Larry Brown took Allen Iverson, just calm him down just a little bit. Now, he doesn't like to keep him over there long. I think he felt like he was getting a little excited. It used to be Iverson would not sit down next to Larry Brown. He would go to the end of the bench, recognizing what Larry's trying to do for him now. Now he comes right back in the game. You see how much rest he got. 43 seconds. That's 40 more than he got the other night, Larry. Sixers with the ball, trailing by two. Well, oh, Iverson really got hit in the head with that, that flip pass. Draws the double, able to spin. Couldn't find anybody, but Tumbo plays it. The Kevin Matumbo able to handle that the pass from Allen Iverson, and the game is tied at, at 61. Matumbo now with 12 points. Nice play. Double team fighting for cutting Robert Horry. The Sixers do not do a good job of double teaming because they don't do it very often. With Matumbo, you don't have to, so the rotations are very poor. The power forward getting a lot of layup opportunities from direct passes from Shaq. Bill Jackson telling us yesterday he was expecting more double teaming on the part of the, the Sixers. Shaq with another reject. Snow. McCullough. shots blocked he tries to post Shaq goes up strong and then gets the rebound and goes right back once again good effort O'Neal is fouled I thought there have been so many instances in this game where you think hey this, this
this will be a turning point, and the 76ers hang right in. Well, Shaq blocks his previous shot, and Kobe runs out, and he gets the fast break, something the Lakers have done very well tonight. And because I'm not going to give up on the play, come right back to me. He almost gets a piece of that one, but the second effort, and Todd McCullough has played so well tonight. Larry Brown has gone to him with heavy minutes, and Tyrone Hill is sitting on the bench right now, so he has given him a real offensive presence. Well, Shaq, one for his previous six, able to hit out the line. A reminder, tomorrow at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, NBC presents the women's final at the French Open for American Jennifer Capriati. The miraculous comeback continues with that convincing victory over Martina Hingis yesterday. She stands just one win away from a second straight Grand Slam. That's the women's final at the French Open tomorrow at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific Coast time. Lakers now lead by four. Three and a half remaining. In the third, Iverson not able to hit. And back comes Kobe Bryant. And Kobe kicks it out. Looked like he would try to finish it, take it to the rim. O'Neal down deep. And it's fine. The shot goes back to the line. You know, the last possession, Shaq steps to the line and makes a couple free throws, which could really be important later on, Bob, and I'll tell you why. is because if this game stays close, because he missed 12 free throws in game one, free throw shooting could become the major contributing factor at the end of this game as the Lakers try to close this out. So as he shoots these free throws at this point in the game, it might not look like much, but it could lead to a whole lot later on. Back now three for nine at the line. And you see the last 17 attempts, only five for 17. Back to struggling at the foul line. We call all the problems he had first half of the season. And then with some extra work, he did pick it up in the second half. But now he's been challenged at the foul line. We saw him game one Wednesday, where he went 10 for 22 at the line. Shaquille O'Neal, he's five for seven from the field. He has 13 points. The Lakers up by three. Snow playing uh, Bryant very well. Ori. O'Neal. Nice adjustment by Robert Ori. That's, that's a nice play because McCullough can't move his feet quickly enough. So rather than shoot the jumper, drive the ball to the basket. Matumbo comes over to help and you drop it off to Shaq for the easy score. Lakers by five as we approach two minutes to go in the front. Shaq with his eighth block shot that ties an NBA Finals record. Here's Cody. And the Lakers lead by seven. Their biggest lead of the night. Laker defense creating offense in this period. This is why they've been able to push it out a little bit, get a little bit of a lead. Shaq shot blocking has led to fast break opportunities. Eight block shots equaling the NBA Finals record, tying them with Patrick Ewing, Akeem Olajuwon, and a fellow by the name of Bill Wolf. The key comes up short. Bryant able to short hop. Fisher for three. Just cannot find the range from downtown. Coming off the electrifying three-point shooting against San Antonio. In fact, the Lakers 0 for 8 from the three-point line. Remember now, they were 27% in the first two rounds before San Antonio. But Todd McCullough on the offensive board. Now, he's had a lot of shots blocked, but he keeps coming back for more. A great little shot with the left hand. But Shaquille O'Neal will answer on the other end. The little penetrating drive by Robert Ory. The powerful finish. McCullough said, I'm coming one more time, Shaq. Shaq said that's eight blocks. And it leads once again to the fast break of the little floater in the lane by Kobe Bryant. Great Laker defense. They lead by seven.
Shaquille O'Neal with eight blocked shots and counting to tie an NBA Finals record that is uh, held by Bill Walton. He came up with eight in a game against the 76ers, June of 77. Akeem Olajuwon had eight against the Celtics. And Patrick Ewing of the New York Knicks in June of 94 with eight against the Houston Rockets. And uh, Shaq has done it here this evening. Led to fast breaks on the other end of the floor for the Lakers. Every time they've been able to block a shot, they've been able to punch it out and get some easy scores. You can see what Shaq has done. That's pretty distinguished company there for Shaq. Also, want to note there to, to Bill Walton. He didn't get any of my shots in '77. You, know, you could point that out during the commercial break. Serving up a facial off the steal, and the Lakers extend to a nine-point lead as we. Remaining in the third. Snow lost it. Try to change direction. O'Neal for Fox from downtown. Shot on the rebound. Only with the tip. Shot takes it away from McCullough. And McCullough going to tip it to Snow. Lakers get back. Snow. Oh, a sensational scoop by Eric Snow. So the Lakers now lead 74 67. 25 seconds remaining in the third. Here's the double. Fisher for three. Yes. And that has to fall. And the Lakers have missed their previous nine from downtown. The Lakers have a foul to give here. We'll see if Iverson penetrates if they take it as this clock winds down. Final seconds. Phil Jackson is uh, trying to pass that information on to uh, Derek Fisher as Iverson shot goes astray. And that's the end of the third quarter. And a technical foul has been called on Allen Iverson, who's being restrained by his teammates. Well, it's been defense, defense, defense by the Lakers. They force turnovers, they block shots, they force difficult shots. And Derek Fisher, out of a timeout, gets a steal and a breakaway dunk. He has struggled, finally gets one to go. And then step behind that three-point line. Remember, this is a guy who had 15 of 20 against San Antonio. That layup gets him going. He knocks in the three. The Lakers have finally got a cushion. They lead by 10. Well, Allen Iverson at the end of the period was very upset. He felt like that he was hit on the elbow right there. You see Fisher's hand right there hit him on the elbow. That will take the shot and throw it completely off. Just that little touch. They get right here. They can look right there. That little contact to a shooter is deadly. And Iverson very, very upset. He's taken 22 shots tonight and has not gotten to the free throw one time. Shot nine free throws in game one. So he lets his emotion out there at Steve Jabby, who gives him a technical. And then Shaq was upset on the previous possession on the offensive rebound when they had that little scrub in the lane. Felt like he was fouled, and he gets a technical. Offsetting technicals. No free throws will be shot. And be Laker basketball, but the important thing, if Iverson or Shaq get a, a technical foul, they will be ejected from the game, so they have to really be careful now. Lakers with a 16-6 run over the last five minutes, 13 seconds. The game at one point was tied at 61. Lakers now lead by 10 as this fourth quarter gets underway right at the start of the quarter. Obviously, Allen Iverson regaining his composure. set up by Shaquille O'Neal. How about that touch pass in the lane? Just dropped it right to him, right in rhythm. What a tremendous pass. Eighth assist for Shaq, along with eight blocks, 24 and 17. McKee's shot was turned back, and now the foul on McKee. And now we're seeing the Lakers that we saw against the Spurs, the Kings, and the Blazers. Look at that touch pass just away from the defense. Look at this, just sort of rolls it up. Looks like, looks like Arvidas Sabonis with that little pass there that he drops off. Oh. Iverson with the steal. Good play, able to 
Deflected off Ori. Allen Iverson brought his team together at midcourt before the start of this fourth quarter. They huddled up as uh, Iverson looking to settle things down with his uh, team falling behind now by 12 points. Bryant. And Roger Bell starts back. Bob, I will tell you this. The Derek Fisher has taken the challenge tonight of guarding Allen Iverson. He has bumped him. He's got his hand in his face. He's challenging every shot. Iverson challenging O'Neal. The ball is knocked away and knocked out of bounds. And, well, Roddy Nunn is indicating a foul on O'Neal. That's his third. Remember now, Iverson is not going to stop attacking the basket. Even though he's been frustrated not getting to the free throw line, he's going to throw his body in there and force the officials to make the call. Mark, you will not get to the line shooting jump shots. He's going to have to continue to assault the basket and hope he can get some foul calls. Steps up and misses his first one, but you can see it's been a tough night for Iverson. 23 field goal attempts, only 15 points, and he misses both free throws. His first free throw attempts of the game. A minute and a half gone by in the fourth quarter. O'Neal pulling his way on the tempo. And the foul charged to Ori. One of the things the Lakers do not want to do is get the Sixers in the penalty early because the Sixers then can get to the free throw line and get their defense set up to where they can defend a little bit better. Marv, right now they're struggling to score from the field, and as a result, their defense is struggling to stop the Lakers. Second team foul committed by the Lakers. Iverson eluding two Lakers. Oh. Now, how tall is he? Six feet, 160 Maybe. pounds? <laughs> Listed at uh, six foot. So the Lakers now lead by 10. Fox, Corey, and O'Neal up front. Bryant and Fisher at the guards. Iverson doing a nice job defensively on Bryant. O'Neal, a tumbo on the rebound. Bell pushing it. Bell takes all the way and is fouled. You know the Sixers are not going to go away, and Phil Jackson knows that, and so do the Lakers. And what they have to be able to do right now is get back and keep the Sixers off that foul line. The Sixers are going to try to run an attack on every possession. Foul committed by Fox. That's four on Rick Fox. Roger Bell to the line for the first time. Following the game on most of these NBC stations, it's your local news, and then the Tonight Show with... Jay Leno, and for those of you who would like to continue with the NBA Finals, we'll have a post-game special on CNBC immediately following the game. Our entire crew will recount the game of highlights, live press conference interviews, and the guests as we take a look back at tonight's Game 2. That's CNBC right after our telecast concludes. Brian for three. Yes. with an 82-70 lead. Well, you knew Kobe was going to bounce back. He was so upset after game one. Seven for 22, six turnovers. Tonight, he has once again been brilliant. Ryan with 29 points. O'Neal over Snow. Called for the offensive foul. Good play by, by Eric Snow. That's number four on shot. And you see the Lakers coaches standing up saying, calm down. We have a 12-point lead. If we don't have a fast break, pull it back and let's get a score. Kobe gives it to the big man, but anytime a big man has to put it on the floor and make the play, all you're going to get is trouble. That time, an offensive foul. The Sixers are starting to dig themselves a big hole down by 12. Lakers taking command. Now take a look at the double team here. Too small, Iverson. So Shaq just seems right over the top, finds out who is going to be my open man as we scan it. Look at Kobe Bryant said, it's Fisher right there. He's the open guy. Shaq takes his time, looks right over the top of the double team, surveys the floor, and Fisher finally buries an open three. 
Shaquille O'Neal has been brilliant tonight on both ends of the floor. You see his points, rebounds, assists, blocks. He has been the dominant figure. And remember, Marv, Phil told us before, Phil Jackson told us before the series, that's where the matchup, that's where the game will be won inside with Shaq. And tonight, that has been the case. Which ball foul against the 76ers? You saw those numbers on Shaquille O'Neal. He may be on the way incredibly to a quadruple double. He has already tied the NBA Finals record with eight block shots. The all-time playoff record is 10. That's shared by Mark Eaton. The Utah Jazz, Akeem Olajuwon of the, the Houston Rockets. Now, block shots were not compiled until the 73-74 season. Building, come on, building. 8.20 remaining in the fourth. Hey. And Bryant tripped up. Sixers with their third team foul. If the Lakers go on to win this game, I thought in the first period, it was so critical to get Kobe back on track. He had struggled so mightily in that first game. He was rusty. His timing was off. Seven for 22. He had six turnovers. I'm sure he went home, watched tape. Where could he attack? Tonight, he got off to a great start, and he's been the attack mode ever since. Kobe, 11 of 22, 29 points. Fisher for three. He hit one just moments ago. That was last touch by Horry. Well, Shaq is telling Brian Schultz are walking down the floor. Hey, Brian, you're wide open. Take the shot. I gave you a wide open three. Be willing to take it. But there's Kobe's quick start. We're talking about Mark. First period, 12 points, and he's not looked back the entire evening. Foul is called. Don Fisher. So the Lakers with four team fouls. One away from the penalty. And Teron Liu will check in, not playing as much as he did in game one, but he did the good job defensively. On Allen Iverson, Derek Fisher hearing it from the crowd. 11 points, and he went chest to chest with Iverson. And you know what? Lou is in there for to try to keep the ball out of Iverson's hands. Don't let him touch it. Iverson for three. And Iverson said, you better get here sooner than that. If you're going to come off the bench, you better get to me quickly. And once again, it's back to a nine-point game. Iverson has 20. Here's Bryant. Love it. Well, how about the Lakers, the way they're attacking the pressure tonight? Doing it with the pass, throwing ahead. Kobe attacking much, much better than they did the other night when they tried to dribble too much. 84, 73. Los Angeles. Saw that coming. And a foul. Roger Bell hustling back to knock it away from Robert Ory. He was not uh, pleased about that move. Marv, there's, old, there's an old expression in basketball. Don't fight pressure with pressure. Move the basketball and then attack ahead. And that's what the Lakers have done. In game one, Kobe dribbled so much in the backcourt that he got himself out of sync. He got his team out of sync. Tonight, that has not been the case. And the Sixers are not shooting it well, so they've not been able to get up the floor in pressure. Bell defending on Bryant. Series of fakes and a foul on Bell. And a gorgeous display by Kobe Bryant. 76ers are over the foul limit. Mark, you go ahead and describe this. Twist, <laughs> twist, go back. Roger Bell went for the second move. Kobe's on his fourth already, and he fades away. Look at this. Kobe got that little shake going, fades. And what you don't want to do if you're Roger Bell is just reach in and get that little touch foul. You get a guy shooting that kind of shot, you make it, you got to run back and tap him and say, that's why you're all pro. I respect that. Kobe has 30. Seven of seven at the line. And you hear the chant of Kobe from this crowd here at Staples. The Lakers now lead by 13. We play five minutes of the fourth quarter. Iverson going glass. Matumbo. Here's McKee. Matumbo reaching for that rebound. And a foul call. Thought shot. And that is number five. Well, Phil 
Jackson kept Shaquille on the floor after he picked up his fourth, and now he will sit off this reach -in. Well, that occurred because Kobe tried to make a pass that wasn't there, and you see the reaction. He's unhappy with himself. If you don't have a clean play, pull that thing back out and use clock, Mark. There's 6.38 to go. You're up 13. You don't need to take any chances right now. Both teams are over the limit. Roger Bell at the line of the Sixers now 10 for 15 at the foul line. Remember in game one, they hit their first 19 and then Matumbo missed two down the stretch. Rick Fox is back. Horace Grant has checked in, so he will be the center. With Fox, Grant, and Bryant up front. Roger Bell missing on both. Just under six and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. The Lakers hoping to tie the series at one. Bryant, offensive foul. That's a good call. Kobe dipped that left shoulder to create space. Now, Phil Jackson doesn't like it, but you're not allowed to create space with your shoulder or your off arm. Now, watch Kobe as he gets his shoulder, and there's the little push to create the space. That's a good call. An opportunity here for the Sixers with Shaquille O'Neal on the bench after picking up a fifth foul. Snow is hit by Bryant. Well, Eric Snow will shoot two. Well, the Sixers got to start making some of these free throws if they're going to get back in the game. We've seen Roger Bell miss. I think he's missed four. We've seen Iverson miss a couple. I mean, if you're going to get back in the game, you're going to have to play six perfect minutes here down 13. <laughs> Brian John admonishing Kobe there a little bit, telling him to keep his head. Don't try to get so aggressive where you start making careless plays. Kobe's made a turnover, an offensive foul, and a foul there, so he's just trying to calm him down. Snow at the line for the first time. A 79% free throw shooter during the regular season. So the Sixers now 12 of 18 at the line, and they're down by 11. sitting down after picking up his fifth foul. The 76ers back to the foul line. Shaq has had just an extraordinary evening. 26 points, 19 rebounds, 8 assists, and 8 blocked shots, which ties an NBA Finals record. Just shy of a quadruple double, and Doug sits back in 1974. Roger Bell got one of five at the line since 74. That's when they first began to keep the quadruple double stat. There have been only four pulled off. We're talking regular season and playoffs. Akeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, Nate Thurman, and Alvin Robertson. They are the only four who have ever come up since 74 with a quadruple double. Off the pressure. The Lakers turn it over. 
Mark, talking about turnovers, okay, the Lakers only had four at halftime. They now have 14, six already here in the fourth quarter. So they are allowing the 76ers to stay around and trying to cut into this lead. They've gotten impatient, they've gotten anxious, and they're taking chances they don't need to take. There's Snow with the step. Upset that he did not set himself up for a three-point possibility, but he will go to the line. Foul committed by Shaw. Still much time left, 5-22. And as the Lakers are well aware, the 76ers, a resilient team. Well, Phil Jackson not, uh, not holding back and perhaps taking a chance here with, with the 10-point lead. A lot of time left, and Shaquille O'Neal will check back in. Here comes Shaq playing with five fouls. We're following tonight's game on most of these NBC stations. It's your local news and then the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And for those of you who would like to continue with NBA Finals coverage, we'll have a post-game special on CNBC right after our telecast. Our entire cast will recap the game with highlights. We'll show you live press conference interviews and uh, a host of guests as we look back at tonight's game. That's the NBA Finals post-game special on CNBC. Another Laker turnover. And the Sixers convert. They're within six. But this is what we saw the other night. Anytime they score, look, they're up the floor defensively. Now the Lakers have to keep their poise. Fox met by Iverson. Remember now, Shaq has five. He has to be very careful now. This is a six-point game. Shaw for three. Brian Shaw continues to hit big shots. I looked over at Phil Jackson. You see a sigh of relief on him. He normally doesn't show much emotion, but that was a big shot. The Lakers up by nine. Matoma. again has been a major factor that's 12 points for snow now will they start fouling Shaq if he catches the ball around the basket remember he has really struggled mark will that become a factor here at the end of this game both teams are over the limit Fisher passing on the three shot clock to seven here's Bryant the 76 are very much alive down by seven just under four to go in this fourth quarter. Here's McKay. Matumbo. The Kathy Matumbo cuts it to an 89 84 Laker lead. And Phil Jackson wants to talk it over. And look where Larry Brown is at half court, high fiving his team. His team hitting themselves on the chest. They will not go away. Another forced turn. Eric Snow misses the layup, but they do not quit on the play. Aaron McKee lays it in, and Matumbo, realizing Shaq had five fouls, goes right at him. Another offensive rebound. Snow sticks that one back in the basket. And this time, Dikembe does get the shot to go. Shaq has got to be very careful. A five-point game, 3.35 to go. Larry Brown know his team has heart. He says, come on, guys. Let's push this to a 2-0 lead. Shaquille O'Neal with five personal fouls back on the floor has to be very careful. An 11-3 run since Shaq was called for his fifth foul. The Lakers at one point led 86 to 73. And Doug, when we look back at these moments for the Los Angeles Lakers, the NBA Finals may well be on the line right here. The pressure is right on them now. The Sixers with this run have put the pressure on the Lakers to score and to attack. And Larry Brown said to his team in that time, and he said, guys, the pressure's on them. Just keep your poise. Make them make a play. No team in the history of the NBA Finals has lost its first two games at home and then come back to win the series. We are seeing degrees of panic by the Lakers here in this fourth quarter. But Tumble has three fouls. That means he has two fouls to take on Shaq if they throw the ball inside to him. So he cannot let him lay the ball in the basket or dunk it. He has to take a foul. 
The shot clock at 10. Neal back for Shaw from downtown. The key thought he was fouled. He was grabbed by Fox. But the Sixers with the ball. Trailing by five. Iverson, his trip, and he'll head for the line. You see why it's important to get into penalty? The, the Lakers started fouling early in the quarter, and it's really hurt them. So what you do now is when you guard Iverson, he's going to throw himself in there, and he's going to create contact and get to that foul line. You've got to have fouls to waste at this stage of the game, and the Lakers have none. Iverson 0 for 2, though, at the line. He's been way off. Usually a solid free throw shooter, 81% during the regular season. He's, he's really excited right now. He's got to calm himself down. He feels his team making a run. He's just got to take a deep breath. And that's not going to happen. He's missed four free throws. Remember, Matumbo missed a couple the other night, so free throw shooting really starting to take its toll. The steal, and then Bell lost it. Boy, they're overplaying everything. Look at the pressure defense. The great steal by Bell, but he steps on the line right there. See referee Ronnie Nunn right on top of that play. But Marvin, you talk about panic setting in, and who does Phil Jackson turn to? Ron Harper He's coming in and stabilizing. Now, here's a guy who has not played much, but Phil has such great confidence in him. Can he help them get home this last three minutes to even this series? Lakers going with Harper for five minutes in the first half to go up against Aaron McKee. O'Neal rebounded by the tumble. That was close to a foul. That was very close to a foul. Against Shaquille O'Neal. Imagine had Iverson made those two free throws, they would have the ball right now with a chance to tie. Iverson played by Harper. Snow for the tumble. as we approach two minutes remaining. And the four, Fisher for three. Yes. Question I have is, you double team, why not maybe take the foul there? I don't want to say that the Sixers are wrong by trying to get it out of Shaq's hand, but maybe you got to make him make a free throw. The dribble penetration, and Matumbo lays the ball in the basket. And then the Sixers go down, they double team. Iverson goes down. He's too small. Double team and Fisher wants a wide open look. Those are the kind of shots he gets. I gotta get San Antonio. What a big, big shot. Just a moment ago, Derek Fisher halted a 76 or 13 3 run by hitting from downtown. You see the Lakers have picked it up with a three point shot after hitting one of their first 10. From beyond the, the three-point line, and the 76ers have just killed themselves at the foul line. Yes, they have. You see, they've gotten there 14 times. They got there early. They got into penalty only 10 the first three quarters. They missed eight, and for the game, Roger Bell and Iverson are combined two of ten. Lakers by six. Two minutes remaining. And the ball. Iverson from a tumbo. McKee. Iverson. It's deflected out by the Lakers. Some last instant decisions by Iverson with his, his passing of the 76ers now with seven on the 24. And a 20-second timeout is taken by Larry Brown with a minute and 49 remaining in the fourth. Lakers by six will be right back. Los Angeles Lakers desperately try to tie the series at one as they head back to Philadelphia for game three on Sunday night. Game four in Philadelphia next Wednesday night. Seven on the shot clock. Lakers have one out of 20 remaining. Sixers, two timeouts left. Here's Roger Bell. Aaron Snow. Rebounded by Brian Shaw. Now, if Shaq touches the ball, you got to foul him. you got to put him on the line right now. Let's see if the Lakers even throw it to him right now. Kid.
Gale just four of ten at the foul line. They're using clock here. Down to five on the 24. One twenty to go in the fourth. Horrible. Lakers. Here's pressure by the 76ers. And again, the Lakers will try to hold for, well, a foul is given. Larry Brown looking to put the Lakers at the line to stop the clock. We're down to a minute and three remaining in the fourth. Uh, Kobe does a nice job out of the double team, finding Ron Harper, whose man had left to double team, and he knocks in the little shot, and then Iverson comes right back. It looks like the Sixers have no chance to win the game, and he comes right back and buries a three, so an eight-point lead goes right down to five. And once again, the pressure goes to Ron Harper in that free throw line. Ron Harper has not spent much time at the uh, foul line. After coming back from that arthroscopic knee surgery during the regular season, a 71% free throw shooter. The Lakers up by five with a minute three to go to the fourth, and Harper hits one out of two. He has five points, six points, Los Angeles leads. A trouble out to help to set the pick. Iverson to the reverse. And Fisher in possession. 76 is must foul. Let them play the, the possession with 11 remaining on the 24. Mark, the Lakers are going to win. Do you think the Sixers have gotten their attention here? I mean, they were on the ropes until Fisher hits that big three to push it to six. What a gutty effort by the Sixers. The Lakers, a big win. We'll go back to Philly 1-1. seconds remaining. Well, the Lakers did not want to foul. Bryant trying to deflect the ball. Picks up number four, so that stops the clock. And the 76ers back to the line. Aaron McKee will, will shoot two. The 76ers coming away with the improbable overtime win. Here on Wednesday night, the Lakers' first loss in 67 days. And they provided a handful here tonight for the Lakers. Well, they pushed him right to the brink, uh, Marv. They had him getting very passive on offense. They turned the basketball. Look at Iverson and Kobe talking to each other right now. A lot of talking going on there right now. I think you're going to see the referees step in and separate the two players. A lot of emotion and passion. A little uh, exchange of trash talking, and Allen Iverson was telling the official Ronnie Nunn, Kobe Bryant started it. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, the free throw shooting for the Sixers in the fourth period was just woeful. When they look back on a chance to steal this game, they're going to look at that foul line and just shake their heads. And the foul is called on Snow, so the Lakers headed back to the line. A reminder following the game on most of these NBC stations, your local news, and then the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, followed by our post-game special on CNBC. That'll be immediately following our telecast. Our entire crew will be on hand. We'll highlights. We'll look at on some live press conferences from here. Jackson and, and Larry Brown. Here's some players. A look back at tonight's game. That's the post-game special on CNBC. Mark, you look at it tonight. A brilliant game by Shaquille O'Neal. A terrific bounce-back game by Kobe Bryant and by Derek Fisher. You look at the free throws missed by Philadelphia and say, how are they even this close? I mean, it, it, it's amazing. It comes back to their heart and their courage and their competitiveness. 
remember now the next three games are in Philadelphia. So they have that three game se uh, little segment there at home in the 2-3-2 two, two format. But Marv you know no home team has ever won all three of those games. So they're probably going to have to come back and try to win another game here in the Staples Center. But the effort they gave tonight was terrific. It really was. Once again they just would not go away. Allen Iverson finished 10 of 29. Not one of his stronger performances coming off the 48 points in game one. 23 for Iverson. Shaq with 28 points, 19 rebounds, 8 block shots, 9 assists. For Kobe and Fisher, 45 points tonight, only 15 in game one. 30 point differential there with those two guys. Shaq was brilliant. Great stretch of the defense. We got a 1 1 series bar. I can't wait to get back to Philly. Kobe Bryant finishes with 31. But Larry Brown, very satisfied. You can see just, just watch his reaction as he greets his players. Very happy with the performance with the 76ers. Hanging around. And they lose by the score of 98 to 89. So this series is even at one. And it picks up in Philadelphia on Sunday night. Game three, Sunday. Game four in Philly next Wednesday night. Let's go over to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Marv. I'm here with Kobe and Shaq. Kobe, let's start with you. What happened, first of all, with Allen Iverson right there at the end of the game? Oh, no, it's a friendly conversation, that's all. Two competitors talking. Didn't look too friendly. Well, in the heat of the battle, nothing's friendly. Kobe, let me ask you, you guys uh, built up the big lead, and the 76ers just would not go away. You said you liked the challenge, but did you get concerned down the stretch? No, you know, they kept on coming. Uh, but we got away from my execution. We didn't do the things that got us to that point. And we just had to regroup and, uh, and execute our offense. Did your game the other night in game one feel what you did tonight to bounce back? No, I wasn't thinking about game one at all. I just wanted to come back, play hard, you know, try to help my team in any way possible. And, uh, and I was able to do some positive things tonight. Last thought, Kobe. What about going back to Philadelphia, your old home? I don't really care. You know, I just want to go down there and play and, you know, try to do what it takes to win the ball game. All right, Kobe, congratulations. We look forward to seeing you in Philadelphia. Shaq, it's a phenomenal game for you tonight. What did this loss in game one do to this team? I think it just, you know, uh, woke us up a little bit. You know, we had 10 days off. Some of the guys were kind of rusty. And, uh, you know, we don't want it easy anyway. So, you know, we let one slip away. We did what we had to do tonight. Now we got to go down there and win one, two, and three. And that was one apiece. The first team to win four is going to be the world champs. Were you concerned that you had to play much of the fourth quarter with five fouls? No, I'm going to just go out and play hard. A lot of those calls were questionable, like they always are. But, uh, you know, we just had to, you know, come out, keep playing, playing with a lot of good guys, and we did that. And, you know, we won the game tonight. Were you surprised that the 76ers just don't go away, that they keep coming back time after time in a game seemingly against San Antonio and Sacramento when you put them away, they go away, but the Sixers won't? Well, they're a very fight feisty team. You know, they shoot the ball well. They're playing at a high level. And we know in Philly they're going to be playing at an even higher level. But we play well on the road, so you know, we'll be fine. Yeah, congratulations. Great job on the block shots, tying the record. All right, Marv, back to you. Thank you, Jim. So these two clubs split the two games in the regular season. They've split the first two of the NBA final series as the scene will shift to the first Union Center in Philadelphia on Sunday night. Back with more from Los Angeles in a moment.